the Nintendo Wii is backwards compatible with the Nintendo GameCube, so you can run games at full speed on the native hardware. So, let me show you how to run GameCube backup files on your Nintendo Wii console. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. If you've been watching my channel recently, you'll know that I've been playing around with my Nintendo Wii console and adding homebrew to that so that we can add some third party applications to sort of turn it into more of a complete retro gaming centre. And, and please do have a look at some of my previous videos on that and I'll, I'll put a link to the playlist up in the corner there and down in the description. But one of the other things that the Nintendo Wii is able to do is to play GameCube games, or at least the earlier models were able to do that um, natively. So there is, of course, a homebrew app which makes GameCube um, playing compatible across all models of the Nintendo Wii, and that's a package called Nintendon't. And that also then, of course, allows you to play backup files of your games from a USB drive. So you then have access, of course, to all your own um, game disks, which you've backed up. Uh, and also then, of course, um, other software which you may find on the Internet. So in this tutorial, I'm going to take you through the full setup of Nintendo and show you how you can play then GameCube games at full speed on your Nintendo Wii console. So before we make a start on this, um, you do need to make sure that you have your Wii console homebrewed and you then have a USB drive ready for your um, GameCube games. Now, if you're not sure how to do that, please do check out my homebrew setup guide. Uh, and again, I'll put a link to that in the description. And at the end of this, I'm also going to be using USB Loader GX to give me a nice front end for my GameCube games. So you can run your games directly through Nintendo, uh, but using USB Loader GX actually makes them look really good and does then allow you to combine your Wii and your GameCube games all together in one library. So have a look at those first and then we'll get into Nintendo. So once you're happy you've got your SD card and your USB drive all correctly formatted, we need to go and get hold of our applications and download them to our PC. So again, we're going to be using this Wii hacks.guide website for links out to the various pieces of, of application software. So first of all, we need to go to the Nintendo don't um, version. And again, all, all of these links, I'll put them in the description down below. Or don't forget, you can pick up this on my main website, the bitsandbits.co.uk website, uh, where again, you'll get lots of information and again, direct links off to all of these uh, download pages. So if we go across to this link here, I've just got to open on a new tab here. You'll come to this um, download page. And really, we just want to download the application here as a zip file. So just download that and save that onto your onto your PC. That is the actual application which allows you to run your GameCube games on the Wii. But we need to be able to correctly um, format our games drive and our games files. So very similar to the Wii Backup Manager that we used for Wii gaming, there is a GameCube Backup Manager which does all of that um, sort of nitty gritty file formatting and file naming all for you. So again, on the Wii Hacks guide, we go to the GameCube Backup Manager link. And if we come down here, you'll see that there is a link off to that. So that will take you to a GitHub page. And on that, if we just scroll down, you'll see there's some information about how it works. And we just want to download the zip file for that application. And again, we're going to save that onto our PC. So those are the only bits of software that we need to download. After this, of course, it then is just a matter of getting hold of some game files. Now, the game files you download, you will find them out there in a range of different formats. And as usual, I'm leaving it up to you to find these files for yourself. And also do be aware, of course, that most of this software is copyrighted. So do check the laws in your local area and just to make sure that you're not falling foul of any of those. So um, when you do find a file, make sure that you download it in either a CISO format or just a plain ISO format. 
So some websites will give you this nkit.iso. Um, you, you need to convert those to proper ISOs before you can use them with this backup manager. So either a plain ISO or a compacted ISO as we find here. But eventually then, that, that will give us all of our um, application software and our game files down on our PC. So we now need to prepare our SD card and USB drive and then transfer that all across to the Wii. So, so let's get started on that. So I'm now in File Explorer on my Windows PC and I'm looking at my Downloads folder where I've just downloaded those two zip files. And I have now my Wii SD card in here and then my Wii USB drive with my Wii games sitting in, in there. So if we go back to the downloaded files, we just simply need to install these applications. So um, let's open up our Nintendo.zip file. And as usual, you'll find an apps folder in there. And that just needs to be copied across onto the root of my Wii SD card. So if I drop it in there, we should find once that's copied inside my apps folder, I should now have my Nintendo. And if we open that up, you'll see the file sitting in there. So that's Nintendo sorted out. Next, we then need to extract our um, GameCube Backup Manager. So we're going to extract it to a file just sitting in here. So if I just click on that and then just say extract to that file there, we should then have a folder with those extracted files. And if I go in there, we should now have somewhere down here, we should have our executable file. So there's our executable file there. So if I open that up and just OK these systems in there, um, just so you can see what's going on. So again, it's asked me to set my language. So of course I'm gonna use English for this. And then let's set that. And there we have our backup manager sitting there. So let's see how we can then copy across our games. So when we first start up the application, of course, it hasn't yet got any databases of games. So that's what it's asking for here. So we simply need to go off and say yes and let it download those game databases. So once that's finished, we should now have, uh, it should now be aware of what games there are so that it can correctly file them and name them for us. So what we need to do now is to, first of all, set our destination area. So again, we and again, this is very similar to the way that the Wii Backup Manager worked. So on here then, drive K is my um, USB drive from my Wii. So again, it says here there isn't a games folder yet. So again, this is the games folder for our GameCube games. So it's going to create that on the drive for us. We say yes. And then, of course, once it's done that, we don't yet have any games on that system. So let's go to our files and I've already created a folder with my ISO um, files in it. So here we have all of the GameCube games in it. So if I come back out of that. So here we need to now um, tell it where those files are. So if we go to more directories, we need to expand out our computer and actually just find those files. So let me see if I can find them down here. And we should come into GameCube in a second. And then I have them in a folder called ISO. So if I OK that, we should then find it's picking up on those files. And as you can see, exactly the same as it did for the Wii Backup Manager, it's identified the code for those, the titles. And again, that means that it will then be able to identify those when we get to actually play those games. So we have all those games there highlighted. I need to select them all. And then I am going to um, transfer them across into my. Um, game my, my USB drive. So I'm going to use the install games. There is two options here. What, what, there's a one-to-one, -one, which will basically transfer them across as the raw ISO files. And there's also a scrub option here, which will try and reduce the file sizes a bit. Now the scrub option only works in ISO files and not in CISO files. Now, but I'm just gonna do them across here as a one-to-one. -one. And of course, you now need to just let that run through um, and transfer those files onto my USB drive. So once all those have copied across, everything is ready to go onto our Wii. Now, now at this point, um, you are able to use this software to download the box art and disc art for each of the games. 
Um, and, and that is something if, if you do not have an internet connection on your Wii, you would need to do it here. But again, um, all of my setup programs and, and tutorials, we do use an internet connection. So I'm going to do that actually on the Wii, which, which I actually find a lot easier. So let's jump across onto the Wii and get this all set up. Actually, just before we jump onto the Wii, it is worth having a look at our USB drive just to see what this backup manager has done for us. So if we look on the root of my USB drive, you'll see that we have now a games folder, which is the one we need for our GameCube games. And then inside that, you'll see that each of the games has now been correctly filed into its own folder. And inside that folder, we have a game.iso file. And this is the format that everything needs to be put into for Nintendo to be able to see these. Uh, and, and that's, again, why I tend to use the backup manager to do it. Um, it just makes the whole process that much easier. OK, so let's jump back now on to the Wii. So on our Wii, if we go into our homebrew channel, we should then find that we have Nintendo sitting there ready to install. So if we select that and load that, it goes through a bit of a setup process where it's going to try and identify our USB devices. And there you can see it's coming back saying to me, um, do I want to use my SD card or my USB drive? So again, my, I've put my games onto my USB drive, on my hard drive. So I'm going to use the D-pad to move down and then select USB. So it's now gone off onto that drive to see if it can find any of the games. And there we have them all now identified. So those are all ready to play. There's a couple of little settings that we do need to change in here. So you can see at the top of the page, it gives you a little menu. So if we want to get out of this, we press our home key. The A key is our select button and our B gets us into settings. So if I press B to get into settings, and what we need to set is our memory card emulation. So if, if you have a an actual original GameCube memory card, you can plug that into your Wii and use that. Um, but obviously, um, a lot of us won't have those. So we can actually get um, Nintendo to emulate a memory card. So we just turn that memory card emulation on there. So if I click B, um, uh, home to come back out of that. And if we then go back onto our USB drive and select that, um, all of our games are ready to play. But um, the interface for Nintendo is, is a little bit clunky. Uh, and it would be very, very nice if we could use our USB Loader GX, which is a nice graphical interface for our Wii games, to also play our GameCube games. Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. Now, if, if you haven't installed USB Loader GX, then please do have a look at my tutorial on doing that. And that will give you a nice graphical user interface with nice box art and disk images and, and all that nice stuff. So let's come out of um, Nintendo. So I'm going to press my home button and my home button again. And once that comes up, I'm now going to come in and go to my USB loader GX and load that in. This will now pick up on my hard drive and it should identify my GameCube games for me. So there we are, and you can see that we now have a couple of games. So these are two um, GameCube games, um, which uh, I haven't yet got the, the artwork for. So let's um, just, if I come up here, this button here lets me specify which games I want to be able to see. So let's just um, refine that down. So I'm just looking at my GameCube games, and we're okay for that. So we have all those um, sitting there. What I can now do is if I go into my list mode, I can actually get it to download all of the artwork um, for these games. So I simply just click on the missing image over here. I specify which artwork I want. So we're just going to let it download all of that. Click on OK. And we should now find that it's um, going to download all of the nice box art for my game. So let's just click Yes and let that run through the process. So once those are all downloaded, click on OK. And we should now find that we have our game art um, all there for us. So if I go back into Carousel View, we have our nice um, USB Loader GX um, interface now up and running. So before we actually can play our games, we do need to make a few setting changes. So if we go into Settings and our Loader Settings, if we come down a bit, we will get to a GameCube section. So in our GameCube section, we want to make sure that our GameCube source is set to auto. 
our GameCube mode is set to do Nintendo, so it will actually use Nintendo to launch our GameCube games. And we want progressive patch to be turned on. If we then come down a little bit more, in we have a Nintendo section. So we want to make sure that our auto boot is set to on. We also want to make sure that if we come down a bit further here, our if we come down, where is it? So we want to make sure that we have memory card emulation turned on. If you don't have that turned on to to something, uh, and, and I tend to use mine as individual, so it saves individual. Um, it uses individual memory cards per game. Uh, if you don't do that, then when you exit out from a game, any of your progress will be lost. So you do need to have that um, set. The last one then is our USB um, controller. So the um, USB Loader GX and Nintendo are compatible with a range of USB game controllers. Um, so you'll need to plug those in if you want to use them. Um, most of them will work, um, but you will find that there are a couple that probably aren't compatible. Um, but to be able to use them at all, you need to turn that on. Now, obviously, Nintendo and USB um, Loader GX will work with the official GameCube controllers and also the classic controller for your Wii. But make sure that's turned on there and um, just try out your USB controllers to see if they work um, and, and, and so on. Okay, so that's all the settings made for that. So we click on back and back again. We should now be in a position where we can play any of our GameCube games. So let's find one that we would like to use. So let's come down here and let's see if we can play. Um, let's try our Star Wars Rogue Leader. Let's click on that and that should then launch that game on our Wii. And there we have our game all up and running now using Nintendo but being launched through our USB Loader GX. So that pretty much wraps it up for Nintendo and GameCube gaming on the Wii. If you've enjoyed this video, please do click that like button and consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on all of my gaming, making and coding tutorials. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.